the causal body point create the 38 the causal body this influence or force or result or whatever it may be called of the antecedent actions of man forms as it were a seed from which germinates the plant even good or bad fruit to be eaten by him during his subsequent existence Purana I, 19, 5. This seed is technically called the Purana Sarira, the causal body Pangala Upanishad too, as it is the cause of man's enjoyment or suffering. This Purana Sarira is composed of the fifth Kosa Anandamaya, adheres to the soul so long as the soul remains enveloped in the gross or subtle body stool or sukshma sarira, and vanishes entirely when the soul extricates itself from the trammels of the said two bodies. For then, the soul attains its primeval purity, and burns up as it were every trace of its combination with the body, including the entire body Purana Sarira. This happens when the soul is prepared for final emancipation, moksha. Till then of course, the Purana Sarira, the result of prior actions, remains effective, and asserts a strong controlling influence over man's actions. The Theosophist, Volume 7, 3, P. 59. Person will by basana, aroma or smell, repeat, in Jagra, the waking state, the old story dreamt in a dream that has passed away. So also will he, who, investigating the true nature of the self has attained to real knowledge, express himself and still will never become Chitabhasa. Chitabhasa is the reflection of Adma in the Purana Sarira, which is the 392 ATREATISE on Cosmic Fire. Struggle now being waged on the planet is between a few egos or the leaders of the many races who are necessarily in place and position owing to their polarization and many personalities who are swept into the vortex through group associations. It is necessarily terrific and forces the destruction of the form. Me. Struggle in the fifth round, being on mental levels, will be between the controlled groups, each working consciously, and with intellectual application, to bring about certain group results. It will result in the triumph, the ultimate triumph, of spirit over matter, in the driving out of certain groups of inner nature to shame themselves free from the trammels of matter, and who prefer captivity to the light of the spirit, it will mark the beginning of the obscuration of our scene, and the gradual passing into Pralaya, during the remaining two and a half rounds of our entire seven chains. It is an interesting occult fact that our earth should now be in her fifth round, and paralleling the Venusian scheme, but the moon chain of our scheme saw a period of temporary. Retardation of the evolutionary process of our heavenly man, it resulted in a temporary slowing down of his activities, and caused, lost time, if such an expression might reverently be permitted. The lords of the dark face, for the inherent forces of matter for a time achieved success, and only the fifth round of our chain achieved. Their ultimate defeat. The Venusian scheme also had its battleground, but the planetary logos of that scheme overcame the antagonistic forces, triumphed over material forms, and was constituted in a position when the right time came to apply the needed stimulation or an vehicle of ignorance. He who has become a celestial being will nevertheless be called man, till the 
the causal body that has already died by the birth of Pragna, our wisdom is completely consumed by the predominant fire of wisdom. Kaibulyanabani Death Party 31 By the rarest fire of true wisdom the body of the Vidya, i.e. the causal body, will be reduced to ash. Kaibulyanabani Death Part 1 98 Copied from the Theosophist, Volume 8 THEFACTORFMANAS 393 Increased fiery vibration to our Earth's team. The fact that outside age is called in during the third root race of this chain, and that the evolution of manas brought about the individualization, in physical form, of the avatar, needs to be pondered on. The divine Manasaputra, the lord of the world, took form himself through that. Driving impulse of manas, inherent in his nature, and in some mysterious way this was aided by another heavenly man of another team. His cooperation was required. P. Summation. We have been studying the origin of manas, and we saw first, that it is the active, intelligently applied, of an entity, and then that this active intelligent will affect all lesser things in cyclic evolution within the body of that particular actively willing existence. This is true of all beings from the logos downwards. Perhaps in summing up it might be expressed thus. The originating source of manasic activity in the solar system is that great cosmic entity who embodies our solar logos as a center in his body along with six other solar logoi who are, in their totality, his seven centers. The originating source of manasic activity in the planetary schemes is that cosmic entity we call the solar logos. He is the active, directing intelligence who is working with definite purpose through his seven centers. The originating source of the manifest principle in a planetary scheme is that lesser cosmic entity whom we call a planetary logos. He works through his seven chains as with the logos through his seven planetary centers. It is interesting here to note that when the solar logos is being manisically impelled to work out some purpose of his greater source, the one about whom not may be said, he may cause a vivification in one or other of his centers according to the purpose in view. This is heard in the forming of the triangle of which Earth and Venus are two points, and affecting. 394 -E -E The heavenly men of these two schemes stimulated them to take initiation, and led the planetary logo of our scheme to form a lesser triangle within his sphere of activity, which triangle eventuated in his taking a lesser initiation, and in the manasic impregnation of animal man. Thus were swept into objective activity that group of monads who go to the composition of a particular center. Similarly, and microcosmically, a human being is the manasic incentive and the origin of active, intelligent will to all the cells within his threefold body, astral, mental and physical. This is the directing intelligence, and is the source of all action and endeavor within his periphery, and, like his greater corresponding spheres, a solar logos and a planetary logos, he works through seven centers. Thus we have traced the origin of manas as far as it is possible to do at this time. The mystery of manas is hidden in existence itself, and holds the secret of life and conceals and veils those entities whose outstanding quality and characteristic it is.
to the life of that little entity we call an atom in the physical body of a man, the thinker in the causal body, his greater directing intelligence, the pure and unknown as the logos as to the thinker, man, himself. The analogy is nevertheless accurate. Point three nine man's physical body, for instance, considering it. 39 forms. The Atharva Veda, as the summation, instructs us in the principles which equally underlie the methods of the world process, and of the atom process a world in miniature. Whether, world process or, atom process depends on the speaker and his point of view. As every mantra of this Veda reflects the operations of the word process, so does it reveal to us cognition within cognition, memory within memory, power within power, world. Within world, fact within fact, action within action, duty within duty, sin within sin, individuality within individuality, ascending and descending from every point in space, endlessly, ceaselessly. Atoms make up molecules, molecules compounds, compound cells, cells tissues, tissues organs, organs bodies, bodies. Communities, communities, classes and races, classes and races, kingdoms, kingdoms of many grades and varied linkings make up a planet, planets make up a solar system, solar systems a vaster system, and so on, unending, nowhere is found simplicity indivisible. T-H-E-S-A-T-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 395 as a corporate whole composed of many lesser lives, suffers or prospers as its directing intelligence acts with wisdom, love or otherwise. The manasic principle actuates all that occurs within the man's aura, and he suffers, or he makes progress, according to the application of that principle. So, reverently may the same be said of the body of the solar logos, a system, and so may it be said of the planetary logos and his scheme. 2. The position of manas. 1. Manas and karma. Having seen that manas is the intelligent purpose of some being, working out an active objectivity, and having touched upon the interrelation existing between certain of these entities, it may now be possible to vision even if somewhat virtually and dimly the true position of the manasic principle in all three cases. The whole mystery of this principle is hidden in two fundamentals. The mystery of the resolution of the six-pointed star, into the five-pointed star. 4041 The mystery of the lords of karma, who are, in themselves, the sole recipients of the mind purposes. Nowhere complexity final, all is relative. Rukhana Bhavada, pp. 334-335 40 It might be of interest to note the correspondences between these six forces and the Shaktis of the Hindu philosophy. The secret doctrine says that the six are the six forces of nature. What are these six forces? C.S. P. I. 312. A. They are types of energy. B. They are the dynamic quality or characteristic of a planetary logos, circa. They are the life force of a heavenly man directed in a certain direction. These, Shaktis, are as follows. 1. Parashakti literally, the supreme force, energy and radiation in and from substance. 2. Jnana Shakti the force of intellect or mind. 3. Ichasya Shakti the power of will, or force in 
producing manifestation. 4. Create taxi the source which materializes the ideal. 396 ATREATISE on cosmic fire. Of that cosmic entity who enfolds our solar logos within his consciousness. When, therefore, the esoteric side of astrology and of mystical geometry has been studied and alliance has been made between these two sciences, a flood of light will be thrown upon this matter of the intelligent principle. When the inner workings of the law of cause and effect, the law whereby the Lipical Lords govern all their actions, is better comprehended, then and then only will the sons of men be able to study with profit the place of manas in the evolutionary scheme. At the present time it is not possible to do more than point out the direction of the path which must be trodden before this. 5. Kundalini Shakti the force which adjusts internal relations to the external. 6. Mantraka Shakti the force laden in sound, speech and music. These six are synthesized by their primary, the seventh. 41 The Secret Doctrine says that it is on the hierarchies and the correct number of these entities that the mystery of the universe is built. Ten the line in the circle, the symbol of the heavenly men, S, P, I, 117. The ten are the Arupa universe. The ten are manifested existence. The ten are some total, S, D, I, 428, S, D, I, 125, S, D, I, 467. Six the six-pointed star. The subjective life and the objective form, overshadowed by spirit. The six of the six forces of nature. S, D, I, 236. The six heavenly men. The six planes. Force or energy, matter or substance, and spirit. The six of the double triangle. The six of the symbol of objectivity. S, D, I, 402. S, D, I, 236. S, D, I, 143. S, D, 2, 625. They are the Diva aspect of manifestation S, D, I, 241. 5. This is the Pentagon, the Mahara, the five pointed star. Compare S, D, I, 218, 219. 5 is the symbol of a planetary logos. S, D, 2, 618. 5 is the symbol of the microcosm. 5 is the symbol of creation. S, D, 2, 608. S, D, 2, 613. It is the second and the third logos united in evolution. In the merging of the five and the six you have the totality of manifestation, the male and female blended in the divine hermaphrodite. Summing up, S, D, I, 235 to 239, 2, 610, 638. The first order, the sixth order, the fifth order, the essential lives, spirit, the self, the objective form, matter, the not-self, intelligence, manas, the relation between, THEFACTORFMANAS 397.
Abstruse matter can be made clear, and to indicate certain lines of investigation which might, if strenuously and scientifically followed, yield to the student a rich reward of knowledge. Until the intuition is better developed than the average man, the very principle of manas itself forms a barrier to its true understanding. 2. Manas and Karmic Purpose If it is realized by the student that manas and intelligent purpose are practically synonymous terms, it will be immediately apparent that karma, and the activities of the look of the Lord's, will be involved in the matter. It will also be apparent that only if the lower mind is transmuted into the abstract or higher mind and ferments into the intuition, will man be able to understand the significance of manas. We may perhaps ask why this must be so. Surely it is because the abstract mind is the agent on cosmic levels whereby the entity concerned formulates its plans and purposes. These plans and purposes conceived of in the abstract mind, in due course of evolution crystallize into concrete form by means of the concrete mind. What we call the archetypal plane in connection with the logos, the plane whereon he forms his ideas, his aspirations and his abstract conceptions, is the logoic correspondence to the atomic abstract levels of the mental plane, from whence are initiated the impulses and purposes of the spirit in man, those purposes which eventually force him into an objective form, thus paralleling logoic manifestation. First the abstract concept then the medium provided for manifestation in form, and, finally, that form itself. Such is the process for gods and for men, and in it is hidden the mystery of mind and of its place in evolution. For the sake of clarity, let us take the microcosm for momentary study. It should be realized by all students that man is spirit or the self, working through matter or 398 ATREATISE on cosmic fire. The not self, by means of the intelligence or manas, and it should also be realized that the statement of this fact, which is equally true of the solar logos, a heavenly man, and a human being, involves the admission of certain deductions based on manifestation itself. One of these deductions is that by means of this principle of manas, form is built. Therefore, the whole subject of the builders has to be studying those entities who are the embodiment of universal mind, who are the animating lives within the form, and who are the divine Manasaputras in their comprehensive totality. In the occult realization of this lies is the secret of the close. Relationship between man and the Viva evolution, man being the repository for the heavenly man of whose body he forms a part, of the purpose of the Logos, and the devas in all their higher grades being the cohesive attractive factor that manipulates matter, and which molds it into shape. The two are partners, indispensable to each other, and without the two working in close cooperation this objective solar system would immediately disintegrate, just as man's dense and etheric bodies disintegrate when the spirit withdraws, and the videos keep their work. Three hierarchies in particular are concerned with objective manifestation in etheric matter, the fourth are strictly human hierarchy, and the fifth and sixth are the diva hierarchies. The other hierarchies fulfill other purposes connected with the life of the spirit in the higher forms in the cosmic ethers, but in connection with our present subject these three hierarchies work on the lower levels of the cosmic physical plane the subplane with which we call 
elemental, astral, and physical plane. Liquefied and the four are perfectly blended, we shall have achieved the nine of a major initiation, and when the six is added we shall have the resolution into one of the groups embodied by a Kumara, as has been hinted here. T-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 399 Clear This marks the resolution of the six-pointed star finally into the five-pointed star. This is a great mystery, and concerns primarily the heavenly man of our scheme, and only incidentally the groups within his body of etheric manifestation. Therefore, be apparent that if all manifestation is the embodiment and form of a cosmic conception, and the working out of it in concrete shapes, monas or intelligence is a basic factor of the process and the means whereby the link is made between the abstract and the concrete. This is already realized to be true in connection with man, and it is equally true of cosmic entities. As man progresses towards the heart of the mystery he awakens to a realization that the aim of evolution for him is to build consciously the channel between the levels which are the different planes of the abstract or of the ideal and the concrete ones whereon he normally functions. This connecting channel has been inadequately called, and is literally, the path, itself. He builds, it, by means of the Manasic Principle consciously applied. By process of transcending the karmic limitations of the three lower planes. Through the method of dominating matter, or the personality, considering it as the not-self. Through the expansion of his consciousness through graded steps until it includes the planes he seeks to reach, and thereby demonstrating the truth of the statement that in order to tread the path he must become the path itself, and the accuracy of the occult truth that the Antaskarana is itself but illusion. Ponder on this, for it carries illumination for those who have eyes to see. In the process of treading the path and of achieving the goal, man is resolved into the five-pointed star, finally into the triangle of the spirit. Between these two stages is 400 ATREATISE on cosmic fire. A mysterious esoteric state wherein he is resolved into the four, not this time the four of the lower quaternary, but a higher four. He becomes part of the consciousness of that occult group hinted at in various places which stands next to the three Lagoi, the four great Maharajas, the dispensers of karma, the repositories of cosmic. Who are reflected but only reflected in the logo of quaternary, or in those four heavenly men who embody with their synthesizing third logo of manas. These four with the synthesizing one are in themselves the jungle of manas, the Brahma aspect, or intelligence and activity. Karma works through manas, and only is the six-pointed star or the sum total of concrete mind in its various divisions becomes the five-pointed star or the synthesis of the lower into the abstract or higher is the transmutation into the three or the spiritual triad made possible via the four or the formless repositories of karmic purpose thus is liberation achieved thus is man set free and the microcosm attains being without the necessity of form taking a hint here in connection with the microcosm may help when the microcosm has transcended the three worlds of matter and has become the five-pointed star, he passes into the consciousness of the monad, or pure spirit, via the fourth plane of Buddy. For him the Buddhist plane
plane is the plane of karmic correspondence. On it he enters into the sphere of conscious knowledge. Operation in the working out of karma for a heavenly man, having completely worked out his personal karma in the lower three spheres. The student whose intuition suffices can work out the planes which corresponds to the Buddhist plane for a heavenly man and for a single logo. This will only be possible if the concept is extended to cosmic levels and beyond the systemic. Through the ideas here imparted it may be possible for the student to think out, for himself, some aspects of the THEFACTORFMANAS 401 Place of Manas in Cosmic Evolution it necessitates a somewhat synthetic viewpoint, and the steady holding of the thought of purpose in all activity, whether cosmic, systemic, planetary, or microcosmic. It is the fire of divine impulse permeating all forms and driving those forms to certain action and achievement. The fire of matter earlier dealt with is the dynamic fire of motion, which keeps in activity each atom of matter. The fire of mind is the coherent impulse and purpose, driving the form build up of active matter in a specific direction and along certain destined paths. It is consequently karmic impulse, originating cause, and operating will. It is likewise the result or the effect of this action in time, and only as the triad comes into play, via the esoteric core, are the fires of both mind and matter burned out and the fire of spirit set free. 3. The present stage of M-A-N-A-S-I-C-E-D-E-L-O-P-M-E-N-T In T-H-E-T-H-R-E-G-R-O-U-P-S Literally, should we paraphrase this sentence, we might express it in the form of an inquiry as to the point attained in the act of working out of the purposes of the great entities involved in cosmic and systemic manifestation. We might also inquire if the intelligent will of the cosmic logos and of the solar logos and equally within the system of the different planetary logoi proceed as satisfactorily to a state where it can be both appreciated and somewhat comprehended. These thoughts are involved in the consideration of this point and open up for as much of very real interest. It should here be pointed out that the Manasic Principle, whether cosmic, systemic, or human manifests in five ways, is transmuted into wisdom after its fivefold manifestation, and eventually is resolved into pure will or power. Herein lies the clue. All the objective display we see around us in connection with the heavenly men, and with the cells of their bodies. 402 ATREHEISE on cosmic fire lies hidden in this. Herein may be found the mystery of the five Kumaras, who are awaiting the final resolution, and herein is secreted the knowledge of divine alchemy, which is based on the five elements, and is concerned with their transformation into a primal element through the medium of an intermediate stage. 1. In the planets. Occult students need, in considering these points, to remember very clearly the distinction between transmutation and the final resolution, between the process of transforming the five elements, esoterically understood, and the final resolution of the transmuted essences into their synthesis. This has a vital bearing upon our subject, for resolution is as yet by no means possible, and the process of transmutation is only just beginning in the majority of cases. In studying these subjects we have necessarily to confine ourselves to the heavenly men, 
for the human unit the cells in their body are of course included in all that is posited about them, and until it is known which cosmic logos recognizes our solar logos as a center in his body, and which six other systems are affiliated with ours, it will not be possible to touch upon the systemic stage of manifest development. But in connection with the heavenly men certain facts are possible of theoretical comprehension, even though not as yet demonstrable to the scientific mind. We will, as usual, tabulate our premises, and thus keep clearly in mind, and visualize, the points under investigation. First, it might first be said that the third aspect, combined with the second, or Brahma and Vishnu allied, go to the totality of the divine Manasaputras. They are will utilizing matter, or active intelligent substance, in order to demonstrate love wisdom, all this is based on purpose, and has foundation as a fundamental, this, T-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 403 Brahma aspect is fivefold and, with the Vishnu aspect, makes the six, or the pentagon, having Mahadeva within the center of all manifestation. Second, this fivefold Brahma aspect or the five Kumaras, are in full manifestation, and, with the reflection of the other two aspects, make the seven of our manifested system. Third, Mercury and Venus are in process of transmutation, and the Manasic principle in both these schemes, having reached a high stage of development, is being transmuted into love wisdom. When three-fifths of the units diva and human that go to the composition of the vehicle of any planetary logos are entering upon the path, then the process of transmutation is entered upon. The faculty of mind is then an instrument for creative use, and not the slayer of the real, and a barrier to the free life of the spirit. Again, it must be noted that Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Vulcan are as yet developing manas, and the stage achieved in each varies, and is not for exoteric publication. The heavenly men of these schemes have not yet succeeded in bringing their bodies to the stage where transmutation on a large scale is possible. They are approaching it, and when the necessary three-fifths is reached, then they will begin to transmute on a larger scale. The Earth's scheme has about one-fifth in process of transmutation in one or other of the globes at this time and Vulcan has very nearly two-fifths. We might here point out that though we are concerned primarily with manas in the human cells in the body of a planetary logos, yet we must remember that the diva units in some schemes preponderate. Although from the standpoint of a human being the devas are in no way considered as coming under the influence of manas, as we understand it, yet from another angle the air manas itself, the active creative force, the fifth and the sixth. 404 ATREATIFE on cosmic fire. Hierarchies in full display. We should ponder upon the relationship, a necessarily close relationship, between the fifth diva hierarchy and the fifth logoic principle, and we should also bear in mind that viewing the whole matter from the angle and vision of a heavenly man the devas are a corporate part of his nature, and he is a Manasaputra, a creative builder, and the fivefold aspect of Brahma. The sum total of manas is pure diva essence, and it is only as union is made between this fivefold third aspect and the other two aspects that we can understand as man whether heavenly man or human comes into being. The devas are united with these other two 
factors and the result is A. A solar logos B. A heavenly man Circa A human being This is a great mystery and is allied to the mystery of electricity or photonic life which H. T. B.42 refers to the messengers, the builders, the devas, are flaming fire, radiant electric matter, and only in time and space, only during manifestation and only through the cycles of objectivity, is such an entity as man possible, or can a heavenly man come into existence? Outside a solar ring cataract, for instance, and as far as our evolution is, Concerns, we have radiant electric substance, active, intelligent ether, ensouled by the Diva Evolution.43 Ds. 42S, E, I, 107, 43 Pitrus. What I called spiritual ideal constitution is what is known as Swarga in our Sanskrit works and the entities that are functioning there are called the Pitras, which of course means fathers. These Pitras are often heard of in a sort of antithetical way to the Devas in our Puranas and this has led some of our Hindus, many Theosophists included, to think that the Pitras and Devas are in two distinct spheres of life. Now Pitras and Devas always exist. Together, the Devas giving the consciousness and the Pitras forming the body. The two are relative terms. If the Pitras be water, the Devas are the fire in the water. If the Pitras be fire, the Devas are the flame in that fire. If the Pitras be the flame, the Devas are the conscious principle that actuates the 